Over the past few years, 32-bit boards have become more and more popular for 3D printers. I wouldn't say that it's exactly a standard, but it's definitely the direction that we seem to be heading in. And with that, a lot of 32-bit boards have become available from really low price to incredibly expensive and really everything in between that. And depending on what you're looking for, as far as functionality, features, and peripherals you want to connect to it, there's not necessarily one board that fits all. On this channel, we've covered a few of them, with one of them being the Lurge X board. I covered that about two years ago, and there's a lot of interest in it due to its price point, as well as the interesting proprietary firmware that's running on that board. Well, since then, Lurge has released the Lurge K, which is the bigger, more feature-rich, packed version of their board. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at that Lurge K board. We're gonna talk about the features of it. We're going to install it into a 3D printer. And we're also gonna take a look at the firmware and software side of things. So if you're looking to upgrade your 3D printer from an 8-bit to a 32-bit, or if you're building a 3D printer from the ground up and are trying to figure out what 32-bit board makes the most sense for you, then I really think you'll be interested in this video. There's a lot of stuff to cover with this board. So without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Starting off, let's take a look at the board itself. The Lurge K board is a fairly large board at 90 by 140 millimeters in size. The CPU it's running is a 32-bit ARM processor and it has six slots for Palulu drivers. The board is incredibly well labeled and there are more inputs on this board than any board I've ever gotten my hands on. And to run through those very quickly with you here, there are six end stop ports for the six stepper motor ports two for probes, one for a servo, one for a motor fan, one for LEDs, one for RGB LEDs, three thermistor ports, two heatsink fans, and two Larry cooling fan ports, a status LED port, power control port, and two filament runout ports. What this means is that this board is incredibly versatile, and no matter what you want to throw at it, there's a good chance that you've got more than enough ports to get the job done. The Lurge K board comes with a very vivid 3.5 inch touchscreen and has five options for drivers. Those options are A4988s, DVR8825s, LV8729s, TMC2208s, and TMC2209s. The version I opted for was the version with the TMC2209 stepper motor drivers. The plan is to install this into the ANET AM8, which is a project that I started about three years ago, and it has moved with me three times, and I just keep putting it off, and I figured this was, nope, this is the perfect board to put in this, and so that's what we're gonna be doing. I had originally purchased a Ramps and Arduino board to install to this uh, AM8 build, and that's what I had originally began to wire in, but being that three years have passed by, it really seems a bit archaic, and so I am excited to install this board into my AM8, and breathe some life into the machine finally. Along with the board, the screen, and the stepper motor drivers, Lurge sent a ton of accessories and add-ons for this board. One awesome thing about it is, is it's almost a modular board where you can purchase just the board steppers and LCD screen, but depending again on what you wanna do, there's a bunch of available add-ons. And so I'll go ahead and run through those quickly with you guys as well. So some of these add-ons include filament runout sensors, a Wi-Fi module, power loss recovery, auto bed leveling, external MOSFET for high powered beds, LED power button, and a power control which will give the firmware the ability to kill power to the machine after a print completes. In this instance, I'm going to be adding the USB along with the Wi-Fi module. So now that I've got the hardware, I need to print out a mount for the board as well as for the LCD screen. I looked over on Lurge's website and I didn't see any official STLs, so I went over to Thingiverse. Luckily, this board has been out for quite a while and there are plenty of suitable amounts available. So I found one for the board and one for the LCD screen that I printed out on my Ender 5 Plus using a massive 0.8 nozzle. So I printed out very quickly. Uh, I printed them out in PETG, which I wish I had done either like an ABS or just something a bit more rigid. Um, I don't know whether the parts were intended to be printed in PLA, but with PTG, since I didn't model them, the walls were a bit thin, and so it had a bit more flex than I would have liked, so that might be something I end up revisiting. I did reach out to Lurge directly and just make a recommendation that, hey, if you guys could provide some STL files for just maybe basic um, setups, like something that's got a 20 and 2020 or just a V-slot extrusion-based printer, that would be really awesome, and they did let me know that that's something that they would consider doing. So with those parts printed out, I went ahead and mounted the board to the back side of the AM8 frame, and I mounted the LCD screen to the very top of the frame. So installation is really as easy as you could possibly have it. Again, the board is very well labeled. They've got really good schematics online too, so you can pull up for reference, but all you're gonna be doing is plugging everything in and then just configuring things from the LCD screen. 
Um, in my instance, just to be safe, after I plugged in every single item, like a step promoter for the x-axis or an end stop or a thermistor, I went ahead and turned on the printer and just made sure that it was behaving correctly because I think that's a much better option than plugging everything in and finding out in the end you've got like three or four things not behaving the way they should be. So I highly recommend just maybe doing one at a time and playing it safe. That way you know that when you're done plugging in the final um, item or peripheral that it's all gonna be working the way you expect it to be. So as I mentioned, one thing that's really unique about this firmware and the Lurge board is that you do not have to configure firmware at all from a computer. It's all done from the touchscreen LCD screen. So you plug everything in, you turn on the machine, and then from the LCD screen, you can choose how uh, big the build volume is. You can choose the um, to invert the direction of the stepper motor. You can choose what kind of thermistor you're using. You can choose what kind of printer it is. Is it a Delta? Is it a Core XY? Is it more of a standard um, machine? Like it's got just every single thing you would need to configure directly from the LCD screen, which is really nice for someone that's intimidated by looking at lines of code. And it, what it means is if you need to change some settings for testing on the fly, you can do so with just the click of a button, which makes install much quicker than really any other board I've ever experienced before. Since Lurge designs the firmware along with the hardware, the install process is a very smooth experience. So one big thing different between Lurge and using something like Marlin firmware that's open source is that Lurge uses proprietary firmware that's developed in-house and it is closed source. So what that means is they give you the firmware already pre-installed and they let you do all of the parameter editing, but you can't actually modify or get the source code itself. And so for most people, that's not going to be an issue. Again, if your purpose is to get the board and just install it and you know it's got all the features that you want, but it is at least something to consider. Again, there are pros of having this proprietary or closed source firmware, at least in this regard, because you can set up your whole printer without having to touch the firmware over on a computer using something like Arduino IDE or VS Code. I was really impressed with the very heavy documentation on Lurge's website and I was able to answer most of my questions just by browsing their documentation. I did have one question in regards to the TMC2209s and so I reached out to Lurge directly and they were very quick to respond to my question. I was also very impressed to see that the firmware had just about every feature that I could dream of already built into it. The firmware is also actively being developed and has been receiving updates every couple months since it launched. Really the most difficult part of the install was likely cable management. The actual plugging and everything into the board and configuring through the touchscreen probably took me about half an hour. What took many, many hours was just thinking on how I wanted to route everything and cutting all of the stepper motor cables to the correct length that I wanted. When I initially had all of the cables, they were very, very long, which left a ton of cables hanging around everywhere, which is not good because you don't want excess cables. It can lead to something moving around and getting snagged, and it's just not good for um, both safety and the longevity of your printer. So I spent a lot of time making sure that I routed and uh, again, just cut, soldered, and used heat shrink tubing to make all of the stepper motor and just all the wires, uh, cables, exactly how I wanted them to be. So once everything was plugged in and wired up, I went ahead and ran an initial mesh bed leveling. I chose nine points thinking it would be a three by three grid. What it ended up being was a nine by nine grid that took a lot longer. So after that, I went ahead and changed it to five points, which did a five by five grid. And that was plenty, uh, probably even overkill considering how small the bed is. But note to anyone that the number you choose for the mesh bed leveling will be that in the X direction as well as that in the Y direction. I then sliced up a simple 20 by 20 millimeter chep cube and hit print. Right after the skirt was starting to lay down, I noticed that the nozzle was a little bit too high, so I very easily went under settings and was able to live baby step the nozzle down to the correct height that I wanted. Setting up the Wi-Fi module was incredibly easy. Once I had it plugged in, you just, on the LCD screen, scan for your Wi-Fi, choose your Wi-Fi, type in your passwords so that you're connected, and then head over to your PC and download the Lurge Control software. When I ran the Lurge Control software, it auto-detected the printer on my network, allowing me to connect to it. From their software, you have full control over the printer and you can start print jobs saved on the flash drive or the micro SD card. You can also send files directly from your computer to the printer's flash drive. This did take quite a while for larger files, so I really plan on primarily using it to just preheat the printer and then check on the status of a print job. Overall, I've been very pleased with the Lurge K board from the install to the features to breathing life into my AM8. And um, I will be posting some bigger prints that I run on this printer over the next week or two here over on Twitter. Finally, after putting the AM8 build off for so many years, it is up and running. I will be revisiting the AM8 build portion of it in a completely separate video for anyone interested where I will go over all of the various hardware components that I installed and just talking a bit more about that build since I know there's a lot of people interested in that. 
If you're interested in finding out more about the Lurge Keyboard or purchasing one for yourself, I will place links down below in the description to where you can do so. If you're looking to upgrade your board from an 8-bit to a 32-bit, or again, build a uh, printer from the ground up and are looking for a main board, the Lurge Keyboard is a seriously solid option. If you're someone like me and you really don't like having to play around with the firmware too much, then this is such a simple and elegant solution. On that note, thank you guys so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. I make a video every single Saturday, so there is always fresh content coming your way. And if you wanna support the channel furthermore, I would place links as well down below to my Patreon, and there are some really cool rewards there. Huge thank you to all of my current Patreon supporters. You guys are awesome, and I'm super thankful for you guys allowing me to spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you guys. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot, and I will see you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.